Welcome back to the channel guys. Here's what's happening today in the garage. I got war paint behind me over there and if you guys have spent any time in a 3.6 Pentastar Jeep, you're going to understand pretty quickly that the cooling system does some funny things. It may run a little hotter than you're comfortable with. All those kinds of situations regarding when the fan comes on, when the thermostat opens, and things that you can do to actually help your engine run cooler and reduce some stress and add some longevity to the components under the hood. So stick around, check this video out, because at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you a real, real important thing that you can do to your vehicle, and it's free. Okay, if you are driving down the street in your Jeep and you are moving, it is completely different, obviously, from sitting in park, right? There's now a load on the engine, but there's also air moving across the radiator, even if your fan isn't on. So what your Jeep does now, your computer says, hey, I'm driving down the road. My engine's working a lot harder. What it'll start to do is it'll turn your fan on earlier than it did when it was in park sitting in your driveway or a parking lot. So your fan now will come on at 217 degrees, okay, at its lowest speed, instead of 228, 226, and it will gradually spin faster the hotter your engine gets. The fan doesn't even reach its maximum speed until you hit 230 degrees. 230! Now, I know that that sounds crazy, and to be honest with you, it is a little crazy. Um, but you'll start to see at 230, your temperature gauge, instead of being at the, you know, in the middle, it'll start to float a little bit past the middle toward the hot, toward the H, right? And that's kind of scary for people. Um, but it's designed to do that. Seeing it run over 230 degrees for short periods of time under stressful environments is not really cause for concern. However, you know your vehicle. Monitor that gauge. You see what it does normally, okay? Because if you're starting to see it float above, really with it not working all that hard, okay? You're starting to see it float up. Uh, you don't have really big tires on your Jeep. You're not pulling a small trailer. You're not loaded down with a bunch of gear. And you're starting to see it float. That engine's working real hard or your cooling system's not working as efficiently. And there's got to be a reason why. So let's dive under the hood. Let's talk about some of the common marketed things that people try to push and talk about to help your engine run cooler. Some of them work, some of them don't. And there's a really big one at the end of this video that's actually free that improves the efficiency of your cooling system in a huge way. So let's go check it out. The first thing we're gonna talk about is airflow. Obviously, if you have a winch on the front of your vehicle, you have a grill, maybe you have some funny inserts in there, you got an American flag back there. Although that's cool, it does restrict airflow. So your engine, especially if it's not your, your cooling system, if it's not working at its optimal you know, efficiency, uh, those things can kind of stress it out, push it past the point of return. Now, some of the other really, really popular things that are marketed are uh, lower thermostats, okay? When you think about it, years ago in older cars, especially back in like the 70s, even in the 80s, um, if you had a vehicle that was running a little warm because you modified it, whatever the situation was, and you put in a lower thermostat, it would run cooler. Well, these don't work that way because your fan is still electric and it's still gonna operate the way the computer tells it to. So it may take a little bit more time to get up to operating temperature, but once it's there, it's going to stay there, okay? So that's really not going to help it uh, in the long term, all right? Um, some of the other things are uh, vented inner fenders on the front. Now, I recommend vented inner fenders because the more airflow you can get under this hood, it won't necessarily help your engine run any cooler, but what it does do is it helps your engine get rid of the heat that is in that engine compartment, okay? So I'm talking about just ambient heat. Your engine will still run just as warm as it always did, right? You can see over here I have the hood vent. You can see that hood vent review. I talk more about it there. 
but all these things do, right? Vented fenders, hood vents, things like that, just allow the heat to leave the engine compartment easier than if you had a solid hood or didn't have front vented inner fenders, okay? That means that heat is hanging out in here and it's just baking all your wiring, your rubber seals and all that kind of stuff a lot faster than it would be if you were to evacuate the heat. All right guys, so now it's time to talk about that free modification that you can do to your vehicle and maintain the system. Before we get to that, I just wanna take a quick second to say if you like what this channel's doing for you, right? Make sure you hit that subscribe button, okay? Uh, lots of people on this channel don't subscribe, which is the same for any YouTube channel, but YouTube really cares about subscribers. And the bigger this channel gets, the better the giveaways are gonna get. Those are starting soon. And uh, the goal is to get to doing some old, cool, custom rock crawler vehicle giveaways. And uh, we're on the way, all right? You guys have been great. Thanks for the support, but definitely click that subscribe button. Let's get back to it. We're gonna basically rinse out the radiator, okay? The only way to do that is from the back of the radiator. You can't get to it from the front because you have your air conditioning condenser and a transmission cooler and your grill, and it, you just really can't get at it all without actually doing it from the back. Um, now it's also easier to do it from the back because the, the contaminants enter from the front. So blowing them out the way they came in is a lot easier than trying to push them all the way through the radiator, okay? The first step of this process, okay, is to remove your air intake. Now mine's aftermarket, so it's gonna look a little different. Uh, I was on the Jeep when I bought it, so um, I just kept it rather than putting a stock one back on. Um, but basically you're gonna wanna remove the hose clamp on the side over here that attaches to your throttle body, okay? Underneath it, on the bottom side, there is gonna be a electrical connector for an air intake temperature sensor. You're gonna wanna make sure you disconnect that as you lift it up and out of the way so you don't damage that, okay? Um, but once this is disconnected, um, then we can move on to the next step. You're basically just gonna wanna take the rubber hose, disconnect it from where it attaches on the radiator uh, by the cap, and it just pulls off, okay? It's not that big of a deal. Like I said, there's a little push pin up in this top corner. It's not, I mean, you can't miss it. It's right there, right next to the hose. You're just gonna, after that, take this, pull it straight up, and then it just lifts out. And you can see here, okay, these two, these two plastic clips, all right, basically are where it's gonna slide in and drop down, all right? We're gonna set it off to the side. Okay, now after that's done, okay, we have, we have pretty good access to the back of the radiator down here, but the only thing that we're gonna to have to now remove is your radiator fan. Now, the radiator fan has two bolts. Basically, right up here in the top, they're eight millimeter bolts. Um, you're basically just gonna to wanna to back those out, no big deal. And then there's two wiring plugs. There's one up here for the fan, and then there's one that's a little bit further down. Uh, once you disconnect the wiring up here and further down, um, you have to take this plastic shroud off. This shroud just has a bunch of push pins in it. You can use either a plastic trim removal tool from an auto parts store, or even a flathead screwdriver or a pick and those will come out just okay, fine. Okay, now on the back, obviously, uh, we're gonna be able to just remove your radiator plug. You push down on this up here, and you pull, and it should come right off. All you have to do is just kind of lift it up, and the whole fan, the whole fan will lift right out, and you'll kind of be able to, to wiggle it around everything and get it out of the vehicle. I'm gonna spray the back of this radiator really well with Simple Green. Then I'm gonna let it sit there for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna hose it out from the back. On the hose, that is the shower attachment. And if you look, right, it's this. You don't want to get into your radiator, okay, with anything super aggressive uh, because you can bend the cooling fins over and then it does a really terrible job at actually cooling anything and allowing air to pass through, all right? But like I said, you're gonna use that setting, uh, that real fine showery type water setting and let's get into this radiator and uh, let's spray it. So I like to start at the top of the radiator, pick a side, go slowly across, back and forth, working your way down. You'll notice most of the dirt is located at the bottom. Spend more time there. 
going to button it all up. You're going to reverse the process from how you took it apart, get it all back together. Make sure you rinse it really well. Rinse it till the water's clear. You get all the bubbles to stop coming out. Make sure you get all the soap and the cleaner out of there. And uh, make sure you plug everything back in, especially your fan. And guys, uh, that's it, okay? I got a ton of mud and crud out of there. I don't know if you can really see it, but in the driveway, right, it's still a little bit wet, but you can definitely see some dirt streaks kind of where it was running down. And uh, again, I got a ton of mud out of the lower half of my radiator. I took it out for a drive afterwards and it ran way cooler, okay? Now, once it heated up to operating temp, right, that, that 220, 225 degree temp range uh, on the road that we were talking about before, it stayed there. But I noticed that, you know, yesterday I drove my rig and on the same road at the same speed, it was a lot warmer yesterday than it was today. And as soon as that cooling fan kicked on, man, that temperature plummeted, which it didn't used to do because it didn't have the airflow. OK, it's a really big deal, especially if you mud your rig. Anyway, guys, hope you guys are enjoying it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out the Amazon store, right, for some stuff that, uh, that I've used with good results. And go build something.